But yeah, Justin, that wraps up topic one. So let's jump into uh, topic two. What is your topic today? Uh, so I was um, thinking about the um, when you were when you asked me this question before um, the relationships that we have with the games that we play and maybe like why we even play them. Um, and I really was kind of re- resonating with thinking about like all the memories I've had playing games. And while there are definitely some single player experiences where you the game is catered to make you feel like powerful or scared in a corridor uh, running away from something like I was thinking about like the experience that I had playing with friends mm-hmm. uh, and all the all the just so much variety to it so um, I guess a really good example of one that I think a lot of people have kind of resonated with is uh, looking back at it now uh, depending on the kind of person you are potentially quite toxic but uh <laughs> the old uh, Halo lobbies or Call of Duty mm. lobbies where mm-hmm. everyone's just saying the terrible things to each other. Um, but usually you had like a party of people that you were playing with mm-hmm. and it was a very routine thing for me to come home and just expect to play that with some friends mm-hmm. and to get on. And while I would probably classify myself as more of like um, average to slightly above average skill level with most games that I play, I, do, I, I think I have decent hand-eye coordination and reaction time for certain gameplay mechanics. Um, it wasn't even super important that you were good at them. You were just playing with people. Sure. Um, and whether or not that experience is um, being around people and they see you, you solve a puzzle together, your, t- your team wins, um, something really ridiculous happens in the game and everyone's laughing at it. Like I just kind of really resonate with those feelings of connecting with people through games. Mm. Um there are some activities that are, of course, just like you and a single friend doing a cooperative experience. Um, you get some games now that have, um, you know, maybe like a party of three or, and you're doing a mission together. Um, sometimes there's like fire teams of six people trying to do something. And of course, not that I don't think everyone's talking to each other, but um, gameplay like Fortnite where it can potentially be like 50 people mm-hmm. or uh, Battlefield is like 60 people versus each other. And it's kind of feeling like this monumental push towards a goal hmm. uh with a with a group of people who have like a, a similar goal in mind and, and and accomplishing that or failing at it of course and and kind of feeling like oh you know we didn't get it this time so let's rally again and get it or just the feeling of accomplishment when you do win the game with uh so many other people playing with you and I've, i really like those memories that it's created for me um just having just uh, we'll i will just be hanging out with some friends and talking about hey remember when we did so and so during this game or I really liked this aspect of it. So I I've always really liked the memories that I've created playing games with friends. Um, that doesn't even necessarily coordinate only with video games. Of course, some people are more of like card games, Mm -hmm. board games. And I think you can create those same kind of experiences to there. But of course, what we're talking about was video games and, and that is easier now to do, especially with online capabilities games. So, um, that's one I, I have really appreciated that because, I know some people have a preference for single player games. And of course I really hope publishers continue to produce those kind of games for people like that. And I even enjoy them too. Um, but, um, the ability to play with other people that you don't see anymore or you see seldom is, um, I don't know. I find that kind of deep and personal to be able to connect with people and, and share and have fun with them, um, over a great distance. So I'm really proud or, um, happy that that technology exists and that publishers are, uh, making games that I can have those experiences with people with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a huge part of gaming in general. Just, yeah, like you said, that shared experience, whether it's <clears throat> going through something together or, yeah, even on the flip side with the, the single player stuff we talked about earlier, just like sharing that experience, like, oh, this, how did you react to so-and-so or this happening or whatever? Mm-hmm. It's, um, I don't know, the only way or the, best way i can compare it to is like that movie theater going experience how like everybody's in mm-hmm. it and then as soon as you leave you're talking about like everything yeah <laughs> yeah be careful well and not so much at least well depends on where you are but uh, sure. having to i feel bad for people walking into the theater after oh you yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's step away yep. to our vehicle maybe and discuss this because sure. i don't want to come out and find out that dumbledore died right spoilers <laughs> if anybody whatever but uh um yeah, like yeah, we'll we'll discuss like what did you think of so and so or this part of that game and um, you sharing and like how well something was done or how scared you were or how intense something was. Like it is nice to like 
people catch things that you, you different people catch different things like did yep. you know and then some games you can play differently so like you know you think about the mass effect games where you have paragon and renegade uh i know even some like um i'm not sure if it was called the same thing but um next build republic games where you can mm. choose like a light or dark side path and how the story elements might be pretty similar but you can have different dialogue options and uh, character interactions with people based off of the choices you've made so i do really like those kind of games too where you can kind of discuss like well here's what here's what i did and here's what happened from that you know, like oh that's completely different than what i did i mm-hmm. did this and this is what happened um and it kind of even encourages you to like maybe play the game again mm-hmm. and see see for yourself how that how that unfolds um so yeah that's I, I i really like those kind of games too where you have an element of choice to um play the game a lot of different ways hmm. nice <laughs> so you kind of <clears throat> you talked about the halo lobbies i would say for me definitely like the the modern warfare 2 lobbies those were that was a big memory point for me um like whenever we had the chance like charlie and i that was a big game that we would go to um whether i was crashing at his place or he was crashing at mine but we would have we would get the two tv set up and we'd just run in there and god those maps like i know they're just releasing them again with modern warfare 3 <laughs> yes. and that stuff um but yeah just running in there hours upon hours and hours playing to that and you mentioned the skill set like seeing the kid the kill screen or what the scoreboard at the end <laughs> Like Charlie would be a little bit up here, and then oh god, oh jeez! <laughs> like I'm just <laughs> gravitating at the bottom, just because I would be run and gun. I'm just like I'm going, and not a great yeah, strategy. You know, <laughs> and you and it and it is feel like especially when you have. Uh, I mean, you can do this obviously with just one other person, but we would play Halo with about four or five people, and you could see consistently like the different types of gameplay style. Mm-hmm. Like somebody likes to camp with a shotgun, and of course that infuriates <laughs> people. Uh, someone else is really good at snipers. Somebody else is really good at throwing like sticky grenades, and someone else is pretty much all around. So like, it is nice to see like different gameplay experiences, um, and and even like with patches coming out. So I think of Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare Two. Um, early on, I feel like there was um, a Kimbo mm. uh, shotgun mm-hmm. that just ruined the game. They were like sniper rifles, and not even realistic. I don't even know how someone could hold two of these and not break their wrist. <laughs> Um, but just hearing people scream about it, I think proximity chat got, uh, mm. was, was a new technology that came in. So you could even hear the enemy team during the game when you were close to them, um, and crap talking or, I mean, people honestly have had really wholesome experiences doing that too. Like sure. you come across somebody who's having a hard time with something and they'll like help them. Um, so it is really fun to see people play games very differently. And like you said, even when the skills level is just pretty different sometimes just it, the point of it is you're playing with people that you that you know and you're having a fun time with it like mm-hmm. they they might even be so bad that they're helping the other team basically right <laughs> <laughs> and not even not even in your best interest but it is it is fun just uh just you know shooting the ship with people mm-hmm. yeah online and playing with them so definitely yeah um with halo like this kind of is a bigger thing but like extra life that's a whole thing of you know playing games with people and that's been huge for me over these past few years but like halo 3 used to be a staple so we had three to four different stations and land them all together and play halo that way but just like opening up the event with that and shout at each other just at the chaos of the random teams and jumping into that um was always a blast um not for extra life specifically but like halo through forge mode dicking around in those mm-hmm. maps where there's races or um i don't know like the zombie mode because you had to make it at that time like that was always fun um and then yeah extra life just been crazy just sharing uh, those experiences whether it's been you know doing tournaments and doing fighting games or uh what did we do last year oh like not tape to tape that's a indie hockey game super blood hockey playing that um and doing a tournament there or uh, is that um is that a um like a 16-bit game or something yeah super blood hockey 16-bit hockey we played I think it we played that we played it when you were okay, here last yeah, time that was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun um so yeah diving into that and then like um like even getting people 
obviously extra life try and do the the people in person and have that energy to bounce off people mm-hmm. but like last year we did the online component and like you joined us for among us and having that and like none of us knowing what to do <laughs> and just no, running around fun, though. yeah just everyone trying to figure it out at the same time too is a lot of fun like yeah. i really enjoy we i have been to a few um back when i lived in charlotte there were i don't even know if the store is there anymore there was a game store but they had mm-hmm. um probably multiple tournaments but my friend and i did join the super smash brother tournaments Mm -hmm. and probably got about halfway through before Mm -hmm. we would get knocked out um and always lose to somebody who just like destroys me with peach sure (laughs) or something um i've only played one to my knowledge i've only played one proper like 16 player 4 xbox LAN party with halo Mm -hmm. and it was so much fun (laughs) um you know, like it, it, it. I mean, look, we look back at it now. Like, I mean, it, it might be easier to do now because TVs aren't as expensive, and sure. they're not, um, they're not tube TVs. We got like you know center oh, profile yeah. links because haul, going to your friend's house and hauling a television is not exactly <laughs> yeah, realistic. Um, so back when I was uh, before we got before me and uh, Jamie got married, we were looking at different uh, wedding options, and then COVID happened, so that of course switched the plan mm. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things I was originally thinking doing for like a bachelor party was a land party for Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how that would have worked. I don't really have to think <laughs> about that anymore. How that would have sure. worked either uh, to get everyone together in one place to play that because like it's kind of the point of it. Of course, you can. Well, I guess the the server is not there to play the first one online anymore. And the Master mm-hmm. Chief Collection still has online support. I'm not really. I don't. I feel like it isn't, or maybe it does. I want to say it does, but I don't know. Okay. Um. I'd be surprised if it did, considering how um, how long it took for them to get Halo Infinite's uh, multiplayer sure. into a place that I think people have like. I don't super keep up with that anymore, but I have under the impression that had a pretty rocky launch as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, obviously, like that that part part of that is just you know yelling at your friend in the other room, getting mad at him for headshotting you or someone running you over with a warhog. Or, mm-hmm. That proximity was was important for that gaming experience to like really feel that. I mean, you can of course play those games online and have those uh, pretty similar experiences too. But being able to like physically look at the person that you hate mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> around the corner and be mad at them later on. So um, now that's I'm that's a, that was a weird time in technology where it was like this medium between like analog and digital, and they were trying to figure out what they could do with connecting people. And so like I do appreciate that. Um, I'm sure there's people that still meet up and do similar things to that i'm like counter-strike mm. getting huge games together with uh, all these pcs together and stuff too so um i'm sure those people are having a blast doing that too like mm-hmm. games of yesteryear and just getting together and just playing nostalgic games with each other and sharing those experiences it seems like a really good time yeah yeah for sure there's been countless hours uh lady and i have lost to Fortnite just playing that over and over and over again <laughs> regardless of the result and that's been that's that not... is something else i'll go in i'll pl- i played for a little bit when it came out and then i just did not touch it for years sure and then my friend who actually moved to japan he's like have you ever played Fortnite?" And i'm like oh uh, that's right that game's still around mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> and i mean i really don't mind the game i i think i'm okay at it um it's funny i uh I say that because we before he moved we went to a uh, arcade here that's mm. called the retrocade and it has um a lot of classic arcade games and of course i, I don't think this is so uh unusual but they have like projectors up behind that you can they have like consoles that you can play games on and they had Fortnite there on the switch he's like why are you playing this here like we can play this at home mm-hmm. i'm like i don't know i just want to see how i do and i won a mm. game there nice. like me versus you know 100 people and uh, i thought my heart was gonna jump out of my throat <laughs> uh-huh. no one else was really watching me i mean the place was pretty full but like i i probably reacted way stronger than anybody else cared to they're like sure. oh he's 13 years old <laughs> and he, he just won his first game but it, it's fun playing with him like i like it's it's a game that he's getting into and he lives there and we don't play a lot of other games together um maybe rocket league here and there but now we've been yeah kind of getting to Fortnite here and there mm-hmm. and playing that it's fun yeah do usually lose though yeah it happens yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes how you lose is better than how you win definitely it's a lot of fun yeah, yeah. nice I'm trying to think of anything else uh well you mentioned mentioned smash but like i've never been i've enjoyed smash i'm not like looking to compete or anything like that but on the same aspect fighting games i've really enjoyed i'm trash online 
but that's always been an experience like sharing with TJ, for example, when we're both playing locally, like that's one of those things you mentioned, like everybody kind of on the ground floor learning together. I feel that's a good experience where we kind of push each other and we're both getting Mm -hmm. better at the game and learning things and picking up combinations or whatever. Like I remember going down there to visit, I think it was around Mortal Kombat X's launch and like we were playing that non-stop <laughs> when we were down there that wasn't the same tri- that wasn't the same trip that jamie came down with you is it i don't think so i think we definitely did play something then that might have been dragon ball fighters which another great game um but i think this was one where i drove down because i think i brought my console or i don't remember because i remember that trip that you're talking about that was when i flew from california so i know i didn't bring anything there oh really oh i don't yeah. know if i thought you flew to i don't know if i thought you flew together but okay yeah i guess that makes sense you were living out there weren't you yeah there was one trip I where think you just... we both met up yeah and then okay yeah i don't think we drove down together i remember driving solo the last trip i did but yeah, I don't remember. But yeah, <laughs> whenever we were playing together, like that was just that was a fun experience of like learning that together, picking up on things, improving and just like you said, not getting mad at the competitive, but like getting into it, you're invested into it. And I yeah. think that's a that's a healthy balance cuz yeah, you go online with some of these things and you're like, I'm getting frustrated. That's not good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I I definitely we we grew up in the time frame two which I, I i don't think they still have it um at stores anymore but um my mom um would take we'd go to walmart or something and, and, and or best buy even i guess that she would do some shopping i guess at walmart makes more sense mm-hmm. and I'm like hey we're gonna be over in toys or electronics sure. that's where we're gonna be at and just sitting there probably developing a neck hump and just looking oh yeah <laughs> well, play, playing um killer instinct was the first Ooh. fighter game i played mm-hmm I, I really did like that. And I think that was kind of like the, um, the counter to Mortal Kombat at the time a little bit. Sure. I feel like the the time frame was similar and how it was set up. I mean, obviously they're both kind of side side view, and it wasn't it wasn't three D or anything. Mm-hmm. But they just kind of had like colorful characters, like um, that looked. I don't know. It kind of just. I feel like maybe. Killer Instinct, which obviously I think there was a remake. Actually, at some I was point. gonna say, it. did you play that? Because it was amazing. I, I did not play that. I okay. wish I did. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, they, um, if you, I mean, one could argue though that if there was a competition in there, that Mortal Kombat won. Of course, that was sure. uh, many more sequels to that game, and it had the audience for it. Killer Instinct just kind of was a. I don't know if it was a one-off. Maybe there was a sequel to the first one. There were two. I do feel like that was. Was it? Was, was it Super NES? Um, you know what? Let's look I, this up. I don't recall. I thought it was N64 that it was on. Mm. Oops. I don't know. Paint. La 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 la. Uh, let's see. Fighting game originally created by Rare and Midway. Oh, really? Published by Midway. Same publisher for Mortal Kombat. Uh, original oh. <laughs> original KI was released for <laughs> arcades in '94. You're right. And then released for the Super Nintendo and Game Boy in 95. Killer Instinct 2 was released in arcades for 96. And then Killer Instinct Gold was released for the 64. And then, yeah, okay. 2013 for Xbox One was the reboot. Goodness, yeah, we didn't even really get into, like, arcade games. Like, playing mm-hmm. it at the arcade, that was expensive. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of fun. Yeah, it's really enjoyed that, too. And we, had, we had a place here called, um, well, here down in Greenville where I live called Frankie's Fun Park and it's I mean probably oh yeah the same as most places uh-huh. have you been there yeah we went oh. randomly one trip it was awesome <laughs> yeah it's great I mean they have like um the go-karts, go-karts and the arcade oh, go-karts. Yeah. I think it might have, yeah arcade and it has like honestly a really impressive like a uh, laser mm. tag course that was like two stories or something oh wow uh, okay. of course I'm I think the last time I played I was just getting murked by like an 11 year old sure uh but but um yes going there and spending so much money and just playing um crazy taxi hydra thunder nfl blitz uh tekken was really i i will say it's probably the fighting game i played the most was tekken. Mm, okay um i won't pretend that i 
understood the story. Sure. I mean, most fighting games. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, there was a lot of fun. I like Tekken, I think, 7 or 8, and then Tag Tournament came out. I had a lot of fun with those. Um, I don't think I'm really good at them. Like, I know some people like really enjoy... Um, I think you probably. I think you you enjoy this quite a bit. Those, those mechanics and that kind yeah, of, I'm definitely kind of definitely more 2D fighter. Like I've tried Tekken, uh, like Soul Calibur back in PS2 era. I really liked a lot. Right. Um, but yeah, Tekken I'm trash at. So <laughs> you ever you ever play Power Stone on the Dreamcast? I've watched a lot of it from one of my the streamers I watch, Maximilian dude. Him and his friends play it occasionally, but I never personally played Power Stone. But I've heard good things. It was hard for me. Is mm. it, it feels like it was one of the I mean, it probably wasn't. For, but for me, it was one of the first games that kind of introduced a 3D battle arena, mm-hmm. um, which was it just made it just made my pro- it just took my problems with the fighting game into another dimension. Sure, <laughs> I, 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 did, I did I did even worse with it. I was like, oh, I need another axis to do well with. So, mm-hmm. um, no, but I the same way with like a lot of different games that have like really technical skills. Like I I have always like admired people's like technicality with like coordination and learning combos and defenses and reading people. So. Um, that is pretty cool. I, I, I do like that they're around, even if it's not for me. Mm. I should have probably asked this last topic. How do you feel about Soulsborne games? Your thing? Not your thing? Soul, soul, I don't know what that is. Oh, mean. okay. Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, oh, um, those kinds of okay, stuff. Okay, never mind. I do know <laughs> of them. Um, I've not played them. I'm under the impression that they're pretty hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been like, I heard they're really easy. Walk in the park, my friends trying to get me into them. No, um, I really don't think this is even in the same vein as that kind of gameplay. But uh, I think the closest thing I've played to something like that was like a higher difficulty of like Ghost of Tsushima. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, it can be really like punishing sure. for any mistakes you make, and like you know sometimes like a single like gameplay mode where like if you die there's no re- checkpoints you gotta start over again sure that's kind of like uh, permadeath modes and stuff um you know i do see some gameplay for them they also look very intense and a lot of fun but yeah if i'm you... a pretty patient person i don't know how i would feel about playing something like that and just and and not getting the result i want sure if you've played because you mentioned survivor earlier i assume you've played fallen order yes i played okay. uh, yes that and, would probably be a very good comparison especially like early on in jedi fallen order like how you're kind of getting slapped a little bit here and there yeah that would probably be like Soulsborne like <laughs> i do feel like I, I used to be better at games than doing parry mm. um but i just i don't know if i'm just getting worse at it with my timing or something but uh <laughs> um i know i know that, that that's an important mechanic in a lot of those games like yeah. counter attacks and stuff so um, yeah. No, I've never played. I've never played those mm-hmm. um, any of that genre really. Sure. Game. So mm. we'll see. One day you'll just get a text message from me. <laughs> it's gonna be like, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> is this? Like, I'm, just, I'm just really mad. <laughs> Thanks. I lost a year or two of my life. <laughs> Veins pop. I'll just send you a picture of this vein on my forehead popping <laughs> sure. out or something. There you go. No, I'll probably, I'll probably give them a try at one point. I'm sure they'll be available on something for free or whatever. Sure. Like, I don't know if it's not something I would normally pay for or not, but uh, yeah. no, I definitely see they, they look pretty pretty cool. Yeah, at least dip your toe into it. It's it's one of those ones mm-hmm. like I want to be better at just because the like the worlds that they are built in um, are just so fantastic. Like Bloodborne's very interesting with that gothic horror. Um, mm-hmm. I think the one I got the farthest into was Sekiro, which is like samurai esque that one was really mm-hmm. good and i'd like to try that again uh elden ring was pretty accessible or at least a little bit more accessible because with that it's the open world mechanic so you have that freedom of like i'm getting really destroyed by this guy i'm gonna go somewhere else whereas the others not it's not super streamlined like one path but you don't have as much flexibility as like an elden ring um okay but yeah they're really fun speaking tj tj loves those games like he's obsessed with elden ring (laughs) um and then there's a recent one which isn't made by FromSoft, but it's the same genre lies of p it just came out which is like pinocchio in like a dark gothic world (laughs) but apparently that one's good yeah okay yeah is it spelled p-i no, so it's lies of the letter P. 
It's been okay. I'm like, I'm like, am I, am I, have <laughs> I been getting Life of Pi mixed up mm, this entire time mm-mm. with this game? No, it's not so that like, Tiger I, like, movie. We saw very different movies. <laughs> it's like there's a kid like in the ocean with a tiger at one point, and right. I'm like, you're like, no, it's Pinocchio. It's Pinocchio. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> Whoa. I got the wrong movie. Yeah. Yes. No, I, 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 it's weird. Like those kind of games do really, um. Like it's kind of it's exactly what you said. Like the the world of those games really entices me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Uh, you kind of get that a little bit with like some uh, like more of the open world aspects of like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, but obviously that's not as hardcore or as um, I don't know if it's RPG ish. Or uh, there are obviously stats for um, and buffs you can give your character for certain types of attacks and this and that, but I wouldn't say it's on the same level of those kind of games. Um, mm. like, I mean, I never even played um, any of the Elder Scrolls games. Mm, okay. Some, somehow. I don't know how I just completely missed, like, Skyrim. Sure. Yeah, how could you? With everybody it, talking? I don't, it, it is, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I, like, pretty much every person, I, uh, all my friends growing up that played games, I played it, like, several times. And, sure. Um. Maybe one day. I'll, I just what I want to do is just be like fifty eight years old and just text everybody. Be like, have you heard of this game? And be like, yeah, brother. Be like, they're, they're on like Elder Scrolls like twelve now. <laughs> Catch up. Um, yeah, I mean, goodness, I don't know. It's just I wish I, I, as much as I like playing games, I just don't feel like I have the time to get to as many of them as I want to. There's just so many oh, of them, yeah. but that's good. Of course, that, that there's, there's just a little bit of something different for everybody. I think games have. And it's really cool too. It's another thing I didn't think about really until recently. Like you see the different controller setups now for people with like adaptive the different accessibility options for yeah. players mm-hmm. um even in the menus for things for like um you know color blindness or sensitivity issues with like controllers and stuff i am really glad to see that kind of um thought from developers go into like their games they're making because i mean of course you want to see anybody have fun with your game i mean there's some things that god didn't intend like people People playing, uh, like they like use the um, the drums from DK's like the bongo Congo game, beat. whatever, yep. like that. <laughs> it, it, and they like they like you know hack into the and like they use it to like play Final Fantasy or something. And, and, and like they're incredibly good at it. I'm like that's that's strain from God's light. I don't know how you're doing <laughs> this or whatever, but uh, I don't think that's the I don't think that's the accessibility that they're talking about. But sure. that being said, like I really do like seeing. Um, new control designs come out and different uh, gameplay mechanics that like really are supportive for um, different kinds of people to play because it, that is nice when it's with, with any, I, if I were a game developer, I would like to see anybody that wants to enjoy my game, be able to enjoy it. So 100%. Um, that is nice. That is nice to see them like reaching out and trying not to cross that divide and helping everyone can. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. 